This is a Best in Climate episode of Earth Feels, where each week your hosts Rose and Christine read to you from some of the best climate-related blogs and articles on the web. Hey there, it's Rose here. Longtime listeners will know that Earth Feels podcast is a direct result of a prompting I received while watching a David Attenborough documentary in the spring of 2019. Sir David speaks to the beauty of our planet and to its plight in a way that I can only describe as inspirational. His documentaries are, for me, the voice of Mother Earth herself, reminding us through stunning photography of the splendor, the abundance, and the diversity of life here, and prompting us to open our hearts, to move beyond despair, to take action in protecting our home. If you've yet to watch a David Attenborough documentary, well, do yourself a favor. I'll include links to a few of my favorites on the corresponding webpage. This week's Best in Climate is an opinion piece originally appearing on mongabay.com in June of 2021 and is republished here as a part of Covering Climate Now, a global journalism collaborative strengthening coverage of the climate story. And today's piece is entitled New Attenborough Film Sounds Alarm on Planetary Boundaries but Offers Hope. A newly released Netflix documentary Breaking Boundaries, The Science of Our Planet, features David Attenborough and Johan Rockström, one of the scientists who introduced the concept of planetary boundaries. Planetary boundaries are Earth system processes essential for the planet's functioning, but have an environmental limit to which they can tolerate changes. According to experts, if these limits are transgressed, the Earth can be pushed into a new, dangerous state. While the film suggests that the planet requires urgent repair, it also offers a clear path forward and a message of hope. Growing up in Sweden, environmental scientist Johan Rockström always knew the southern of the two peaks of Mount Kebnekaise was the highest point in the country. But thanks to climate change, the glacial summit has shrunk and subsequently lost its rank, scientists confirmed in 2019. Quote, as a kid in Sweden, like all children in Sweden, we learn that the southern top of Mount Kebnekaise is the highest peak in the country, Rockstrom said in a newly released documentary narrated by David Attenborough. Quote, it's something that's just ingrained in the identity of being a Swedish citizen. So, of course, it's with sadness one comes to realize that will no longer be the case. This is just one anecdote related in the Netflix film Breaking Boundaries, The Science of Our Planet, to illustrate the impacts humans are having on the planet. The viewer is also taken to the Amazon rainforest, which is slowly turning into a savanna due to forest loss, degradation, and climate change. Then the viewer is pulled across the world to Australia, where the Great Barrier Reef experienced one of the most severe coral bleaching events shortly after catastrophic fires ripped through 11 million hectares, or 27.2 million acres, of land, killing about a billion native animals. These environmental issues are explained within the context of planetary boundaries, a concept developed by Rockström, the founding director of Sweden's Stockholm Resilience Centre, and other leading scientists, including Will Steffen of Australian National University. Planetary boundaries are key processes essential for sustaining life on Earth. Each one has a limit as to how much pressure it can take from humanity 
before it is pushed over a tipping point and into a state in which changes can no longer be reversed. Quote, one characteristic of tipping points is that once you pressed the on button, you cannot stop it, Rockstrom says in the film. It takes over. It's too late. It's not like you can say, oops, now I realize I didn't want to melt the Greenland ice sheet, end quote. Rockstrom and his colleagues have identified nine boundaries. Climate change, biosphere integrity, ocean acidification, the depletion of the ozone layer, atmospheric aerosol pollution, biogeochemical flows of nitrogen and phosphorus, fresh water use, land system change, and the release of novel chemicals such as heavy metals, radioactive materials, and plastics. Two of the boundaries, climate change and biosphere integrity, are considered core boundaries since either of them could negatively reshape the world if their parameters are transgressed. The climate change boundary is arguably the most well-known of the nine. Its safe operating limit is set at 350 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But this was surpassed in 1988, pushing the Earth into what Rockstrom calls the danger zone. Carbon levels now exceed 419 parts per million. And if we reach 450 parts per million by 2040, as is currently projected, we will enter the high risk zone that would likely trigger a series of irreversible tipping points, according to the film. Other planetary boundaries are less conspicuous, yet equally crucial to sustaining life on Earth, the film shows. For instance, the overuse of fertilizers to grow food has led to vast amounts of nitrogen and phosphorus being released into freshwater systems and the ocean. This, in turn, has led to eutrophication and has been responsible for the deterioration of water quality and the creation of marine dead zones. Based on the theory of planetary boundaries, the safe operating limit for biochemical flows is already in the high-risk zone. Quote, we are well across the nutrient boundary, Elena Bennett a professor at McGill University in Canada and an expert on the impact of fertilizers, says in the film, it's not a thing we think about very often. I think we need to be taking this boundary much more seriously than we currently are, end quote. The safe limits of two additional boundaries, land system changes and biosphere integrity, have also been surpassed, according to a 2009 paper on the topic. The operating limits of other planetary boundaries, such as the release of novel chemicals, have yet to be clearly defined. Rockstrom says the film's release is significant in the lead-up to the three UN summits that will take place this year. One that looks at biodiversity, another that looks at food systems, and the third that will examine climate. Quote, this is the moment, Rockstrom said in a statement. This is our chance to make things right. This documentary comes out right at this point, where it's like this perfect action movie showing a major threat that can, if we turn things around, have a happy ending. End quote. While the film's underlying message is that we should be deeply concerned for the state of our planet, it also suggests a clear path forward. According to the film, one necessary action is reducing greenhouse gas emissions to a point at which we can re-enter the safe operating space of the climate change boundary. It also suggests making changes as to how we farm and eat and provide better protection to critical ecosystems such as wetlands and oceans. Quote, now that Johan and his colleagues have turned on the headlights, we can clearly see the boundaries, Attenborough says towards the end of the film. We can see the path back to a safe place. 
to a more resilient future. It is achievable. End quote. Again, this is from the June 4th edition of mangabay.com. I'll include a link on today's corresponding webpage. I think the summer has really brought things into clear focus for most of us. As I'm recording this, Hurricane Ida is hitting Louisiana, and it's expected to be worse than Katrina. Wildfires rage throughout the West. Here in Cape Cod, we were lucky enough to miss Hurricane Henry, but we all know that our climate is drastically changed. Attenborough's film offers us hope if we take action. Just watching the film may be inspirational enough for you to determine what your next step will be. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next time. That's this week's episode of Best in Climate for Earth Feels. Special thanks to singer-songwriter Kristen Hoffman for generously allowing us to use song for the ocean. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss an episode. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. Children of the earth, I'm calling out. There's a mission for you and for me.